tell me uh, on on intuition. Intuition is really awesome. I, of course, I live my life quite a bit in intuition in my coaching and facilitating other individuals. And some people are so science based that if science hasn't proven it, then they can't even think the thought. And the problem with that is, is all science that makes huge differences comes by intuition where they say, let's try this, let's discover that. And because if we didn't have a question of a possibility, then we would never experiment. Science is fabulous. Intuition in science is amazing, is, yeah. is simply amazing. So, yeah, intuition is a good thing. I, yeah, you know, Ron, I run into both types of people. In fact, I was talking to someone just today who, uh, who has a lot of intuition uh, within herself that she uses in her practice constantly, but she also uh, values the science. And so we were kind of joking because she was saying how, you know, she'll see something and her intuition will say, you know, this, this is the answer. But then she'll go and research and research and research and just look everything up that she can to find it. And then when she, after she's done all the research, she says, well, I, I really knew it right before I started anyway. <laughs> In other words, she doesn't trust that, yeah. that trust factor. She, she's getting the knowledge, she's getting the awareness, and she already had something tell her, some insights, right? Mm -hmm. But um, she's not trusting those insights. I wrote down here in the notes, as you, uh, you may see, practice and challenge that intuition. Uh, I don't have that as part of the seven, the seven of knowledge, awareness, creativity, connection, trust, insights, and motivation. But practice and challenge that intuition is part of it. You need to actually challenge it. That's what research is. Research is challenging what has been previously thought of and actually research sometimes. And, um, and if it can handle the challenge, then okay, that's fabulous. We can go on. If it doesn't, then we look at another option. Um, so so into you mean you, when you say challenge it you mean if you get an intuition then you challenge it and you discover whether or not that intuition is valid that's what i do that's i do it all the time um and i trust myself more and more over time because i allow myself to do that at first sometimes it was inaccurate and i go oh i must be wrong uh my intuition is crap well yeah if you keep saying that it is but it, it's like learning a bicycle. And I, I was able to see a grandchild, uh, two grandchildren last night uh, with their new, one's like uh, turn three and the other one's uh, four, uh, turning five, I guess, pretty soon. Whatever, I, I can't remember their ages anyway. Um, but um, they had these balancing bikes, not without any pedals on. And so they were just putting their feet on the ground as they go forward. So they weren't, you know, using their feet to create the, uh, the action of the wheels, but they were learning how to balance on the bike. They were testing out their balance. Intuition is purely a balance. It's a, a balance act between the mind, the heart, and the body. The body tells us so much stuff. There's so much intuition that goes with the body. Someone has an ache in the pain in the body, and it could have something to do with their fear, their anxiety, could have something to do with what happened yesterday. It doesn't mean it does. So you challenge that ache, and you say, okay, you look it up in the Mind Body Dictionary, Arn. Oh, yeah, it says that. Of course it does. So the mind-body dictionary enhances people's intuition because it, it allows their, their intuition to start working sooner and more. Now, it's not definitive because um, areas of the body can mean many things. Everybody wants it so that if you drink or if you take vitamin C, it will help you with cancer or will help you with, with uh, not getting a cold. Not necessarily. Vitamin C in the body will do many, many, many things. And if you have excess vitamin C and get diarrhea, well, that doesn't mean vitamin C is wrong. It's just too much vitamin C. Intuition is learning that, that it is a possibility. 
It's an option. It's not a definitive act. And, and trying to force it into a definitive then misses so much stuff. It's, it's uh, some uh, massage therapist here was saying the other day that, because uh, he's into music and he plays the guitar and sings and all this kind of stuff. And he said a famous uh, uh, teacher of, of violin uh, was, uh, was, would say to these students, okay, play this note as a square or you play this note as brown. And then he would help their intuition in the playing so that they would learn it. And what he was doing is he was making them a maestro, a, 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 a not just an aficionado of it, but someone who actually it enriches the experience of the music as they're playing deeper with feeling, with intuition and sensing. Intuition enhances the experience and, um, and brings greater understanding and mastery. Um, it doesn't say you have a problem exactly. It gives you the possibility. It opens up the door. It doesn't close doors. So by closing doors, then I'm losing intuition. But I, anyway, I went on a, a, little, a little fun discussion there. I hope that was okay. That was wonderful. You know, I've watched you use intuition and teach me how to use my intuition for years. And, you know, the insights from intuition are not the kind that you can find from, you know, definitive statement, you know, type of stuff. It's something that you, you do have to step back and you have to see it from a completely different perspective or allow yourself to observe from one that you didn't, you know, you weren't critically uh, you know, normally what you would normally critically analyze through, you know, it's from yeah. a totally different place. That's right. That's right. And when you come from that totally different place, it gives it a lot of options. And so, um, and so what I wanted to do is just talk about some of the steps and for example, on knowledge mm -hmm. from your point of view, how does knowledge help? Well, if you have a base of knowledge, like what you might find in the app, then it gives you a framework to work from you know you're not way out in left field or you know off the cliff or something you're in it <laughs> says okay i i i have the, a basic pattern that i can look at and, and gain understanding from and not be so off base or whatever true and if the practitioner is off the cliff with the client then we have a lot of problems we don't <laughs> we both don't want to be off the cliff <laughs> yeah um and now, oftentimes the knowledge doesn't match their experience, which, you know, I've had sometimes and I just smile and it doesn't matter because their experience might be more biochemical and might be more mental. It might be more emotional. It might be some past event or sometimes it's a belief that's been passed on for generations upon generations of time. And and the other day, I just asked a particular person who was having lots of odd pain in their body and just, you know, just touching things would make it painful and stuff like that. And I, I just said, you know, I bet that somewhere along the line, someone was really, really angry, like four or five generations ago. Let's just say four generations. Someone was just a little, little uh, fire ant or what did I say? I said something else anyway. Uh, just really, you know, kind of angry and pushy. And uh, the mom was actually there. This is, uh, the person was about 20 years old, but the mom was sitting there, this other individual, and she goes, oh, yeah, my grandmother. And she started describing her grandmother like that. And now, because of the work of decades of doing this, uh, that intuition came to me, and that's not in the app at that level, but that's okay. People can be trained to do this. Uh, I train, train and other people train. And, but the point of it is, is she was experiencing things in her body that no science out there has been able to explain yet. But yet it was connected because once she started to connect to that, then she started looking at her own life and seeing her own anger and how it could be affecting her body. And she started to settle down and, and the pain started going away immediately because she saw how she was harboring emotions in her body. And just by seeing it the way we did it, that knowledge gave her a chance to have awareness in her body. Yeah. That knowledge helped her get this 
going and then she started being creative i mean it's so amazing how quick it happens once the knowledge door opens up it creates an awareness and they trust it of course and boom it just it's just is amazing so i gave you a kind of a complicated one but you know here let me grab you go for the complicated ones first of course right <laughs> <laughs> we had it we had to do a simpler one like uh i don't know Use the arm one, actually. I have a simple The arm one. one. You want to do that one? I had a client that came in with arm struggles, you know, and uh, she did have an event that indicated, oh, well, this might be, you know, related. But, you know, why was her arm not healing and all this kind of stuff? And, you know, we look it up on the Mind Body Dictionary, Dictionary app and it says you're carry, trying to carry the burden and do all the work. You're strong, but sometimes it's deceptive because you're relying on yourself and have fear of letting others be a part of the daily task of life. And it was like, a, you know, uh, duh, you know, like that was her, that was her paradigm. <laughs> like everybody knows that. <laughs> yeah, I know, of course I'm doing all the work. Of course I'm strong and I can do it. Why won't my arm let me do it, you know? And, and uh, so then of course, when she became aware of that, that knowledge and that awareness, oh, oh, I see that I'm doing this all the time. And then she really does have to be creative and saying, okay, how can I do this differently? Because I do need to do this. This has been hard for a long time. I know it's been hard for a long time, but you know, it's just the way I've gotten accustomed to doing it. But then being creative with living her life in a totally different way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, you notice that uh, even though she, part of her knew it at some level, I have some people who said, oh, I know that. I said, well, why haven't you used, used that knowledge to make a difference in your life? uh then they don't know what to say and i said it's more not it's just not knowledge mm -hmm. i mean knowledge is one thing i mean an alcoholic knows oh yeah it's kind of ruining my life yeah. but that knowledge doesn't always change them yeah right? motivated you have to have that motivation and what builds that motivation is all these other steps yes Motivation is not the first thing. And, you know, it wouldn't it be great if the world were like that and someone said, oh, you need to change that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> okay, people, you need to, you need to be more efficient at your work. Oh, yes. We'll tell the government that. You'd be really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm happy to be. Thank you for saying oh, yeah, so that. <laughs> Well, and, and, you know, many in the government are, but there's some that are not. And that's why I said that. But anyway, go ahead. Well, that's where I think the connection and the trust has to be there for sure. Obviously, the insights as well. But if if they don't have the connection to other people mm -hmm. or the trust in the process, well, you know, there's not much motivation if you can't have that connection, that trust. But if you do have connection with the other people, you know, it, whether it be in a relationship or um, a connection with a, a therapist or a counselor or a practitioner that you really trust mm -hmm. um, can make a difference um, and help you along Perfect. in understanding how the, this can actually work. Oh, this could actually work. This, this is another way and it'd be way better than it was before. Perfect. Um, that connection uh, to another person, uh, to God, to nature, to self, to your heart, to your body is essential because it's a pathway. Energy is energy is not stagnant. It has to go somewhere. And so when it becomes stagnant, well, there's depression or I'm stuck or I'm hopeless or I don't get anything done. So connection is vital to this. You're right. And so a therapist and a, a client uh, environment is, is vital because then that energy can move. There's somewhere to go. I've had many people say, oh, just talking has made a huge difference because I just hear myself. I all of a sudden know what's going on. And so those therapists that are, that are you know, in cognitive uh, behavioral therapy, it's fabulous what they're doing or, uh, or uh, positive psychology, you know, where they're moving and by communicating. Mm -hmm. Now, People, individuals who are all the way over in another spectrum where their energy, where it's a massage therapist or a, a Reiki person or, you know, um, uh, energy psychology, where they're moving energy with the body. 
that is also a connection. They make a connection, they move it, which also builds intuition. It isn't always the mind. It can be heart, it can be body, between each other or inside uh, one another. And of course, there's meditation and the spiritual side. So a connection. I had a, another friend who was saying that she was being challenged, you know, hey, why are you going to these practitioners? Why are you going to these people? Because she had a few different, you know, folks that she was, she was going to to help her in her progression. You know, why don't you just meditate or something? And she said, you know, I can try really hard on my own, but something's different when I go to someone, you know, she's like, that's where miracles happen. And just these profound changes just happen. She's like, I don't know what it is, but something about having more than one, more than just me makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. And that's part of that connection. Well, and there is a scripture that talks about where there are more, two or more, there I am. And that is so true. The, the divine essence in each of us come alive when there's a positive connection and interaction. The energy, there is an energy exchange. And there are, um, there are workshops and practitioners out there that know a lot about that and teach how important to have that interaction and integrity between individuals and, and or between groups. I know currently there all the stress in society and anger and frustration and fear can be alleviate, alleviated much by creating a trust and connection amongst groups and say, let's focus on building rather than on destruction and on negative. And, and then the insights would come and then the knowledge and awareness would easily start coming to individuals rather than the shutdown that happens. And, uh, yeah, one of the worst things an individual can do is to someone who's shut down is, you know, push them, push them, push them, because they're going to shut down more. That's not a connection. That's lack of connection and uh, force. So, which actually brings up another good point with intuition. Uh, I know some people try to force their intuition. They get frustrated when it's not there. For example, a writer, you know, they're trying to write or a painter and it's not there. Uh, that's the time they need to go and and open up a door of uh, of one of these like knowledge. So, if a writer is having a hard time, then go read something. <laughs> go write something else that has nothing to do with your. You you need to open up other doors. If you if a therapist or a coach is meeting with someone and they're talking about something that that is just like ah, I just don't know, then take a moment and go just spread your field of knowledge and even if if it's outside your knowledge so for example let's say they're talking to someone and they do have arm problems and they looked at it and they said oh that's not it that's not it you go okay but they could actually increase their knowledge by randomly going somewhere else and i'll show you this it's pretty cool and i'm just i just randomly went to um the pancreas and here and it's got to go through its little cycle there. There we go. And nope, got to gotta subscribe to that. So subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I thought that was one of them that was up. And, uh, and it's really good to have full access. It's actually pretty inexpensive, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's just a one-time quick fee. Oh, yeah. yeah it's pretty, really, really inexpensive. Um, I can get it and, wrong. I've got pancreas here. You want me to read that one to you? I could go right there. Oh, maybe you can. Go ahead and read it. The many stressful emotions are building up inside. You might feel betrayed, controlled, or have felt anger from others. You have suppressed bitterness. You have cyclical thoughts that are self-critical and critical of others. You drive yourself, placate, or please others. Worrying is consuming you whether you are happy or not. You are struggling to see the good or the point or the purpose. You are easily affected by others' thoughts and feelings. You may carry shame and bitterness because you do not think that you have reached the level of success that you should have by this point. Good. Now you take that, rather than me say anything, imagine the lady that, uh, that you were communicating with, with the arm problem, read that one instead. How many of those points would have applied to her? She um, definitely had the emotions building up. 
I don't know that she would have resonated much with the betrayal, controlled, or, or anger from others, for that matter. She might have suppressed bitterness, though, from having to do all the work all the time. <laughs> so, it doesn't have to be everything. Mm -hmm. It would just be something that would hurt them. Yeah. Something to to wake it up like some knowledge and they go, well, it isn't all that, but yeah, I've got a little bitterness or resentment and I have to work it all the time. And um, I think there was one other thing I heard. Um, was there a burden in there somewhere? Let's see. The burden was on the arm. Yeah, the burden was on the arm, not the pancreas. Yeah, worry was consuming whether you're happy or not. Oh, worry. Mm -hmm. consuming now the arm actually it doesn't say that in the on the arm one about worry and consuming but the arm can be when the arm starts to go and have a problem sometimes i'm i'm trying to do too much and i'm consumed so sometimes a word in another at another definition would show up now um and then once the person breaks through, because part of intuition is creativity and, and piercing through that knowledge base. So that's another thing on the challenge, on practice and challenge that intuition, you need to um, change it up. Um, and, and, and because they're stuck, there's a, there's a stuckness to it. And once they go, oh, well, it doesn't all apply over on the pancreas one, but a few do. Then you go back to the arm one. Then you go back to the arm, and then you read it again. And then now read the arm one, go back to the arm one. Sure. And in fact, on the arm one, what you would do is instead of going to the, the uh, condition, I would actually go to um, the suggestion. Follow your dream, but include others. Learn to be strong together. You can be open and let your fear of overwhelm serve as the catalyst for changing your life and doing your daily tasks with wisdom, insight, and mutual uh, uh, co uh, cooperation with others and things like that with insights. Then when you read that, when you have went somewhere else with some knowledge, then you come back because they were stuck. Let's, let's say that she was stuck. I mean, she wasn't, but I'm using this example. Then what do you think would happen? Okay, when somewhere else got one or two words, you even admit to them, hey, I, you know, this may not apply, but let's just use a random one, boom. What applies, great. Now let's go back to the other one. What do you, what do you think could happen? Um, I, I would think doing something like that would open up a little bit of, uh creativity and and right. maybe even playfulness of oh let's just put the puzzle we're just playing with a puzzle now um and enjoying the the connection from a space of just insights and, right. and the cool thing is they found with learning that a child needs a recess needs music and needs exercise mm -hmm. so the the school programs that take out recess take out music and take out physical exercise, the children don't do as well. In fact, they become depressed anyway and get you know, you know, life's a burden. The brain and the body and the heart need diversion, need activity, need music and creativity brings in that right brain, brings in the heart, and all of a sudden they open their heart. I guarantee everyone who's stuck, if a therapist has someone who's stuck, they're not linking their head and their heart and their body. It's not connecting. You need the creativity to make a connection. Creativity comes before connection. It does, you can't turn it the other way around. A true connection only it happens when there's, you know, some creativity and openness, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, that makes so, sense. And even standing up, they can use the app by standing up and reading it while they're walking or reading it while they're seeing, it, seeing the app. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Be creative. That opens up intuition. Um, or you can open up intuition by doing this. This is another creative thing they could do with, let's say, the arm one, and they, um, they, um, okay, just two seconds. Um, so, um, you know, you could do it 
follow your dream on Saturday, but include others on Sunday. Learn to be strong together on Monday. Or you could add colors. You could be open with green shirts and let your fear of overwhelm serve as the catalyst for changing your life with black shoes. <laughs> now, and then after they do that with creativity, then have them read it without the creative stuff. Follow your dreams, but include others. Learn to be strong together. And all of a sudden, it calms it down. And then the resistance goes down. Because intuition uh, and resistance is, is a big, big thing. Um, so, so what I'm hearing from what you're saying is part of the problem with um, maybe a block in intuition is not just, you know, needing diversion and more knowledge or, mm -hmm. you know, creativity or whatever, but actually oh, too much pressure. You know, the resistance comes because the pressure is intense and, oh, I got to get this right. I got to figure this out. And when you back off or you get playful or, I mean, that was just so like you, Ron, to be like, oh, let's do this on Monday and let's do that on Tuesday. And, you know, with some black shoes and, you know, <laughs> and some green shirts, just playing with it and lightening it up and just making it less serious, but just something to enjoy and have fun. And, and then the resistance just goes away. It reduces. Resistance means I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, oh, I, I, I mean, it's just, even if resistance is angry resistance, it's still fear. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just, anger resistance means I'm pushing when I'm scared, right? Mm -hmm. So if I open it up and try different creative ways, then all of a sudden I can connect my two parts of my brain, right and left, the top and bottom, front mm -hmm. and back, you know, get that default mold network not in the way, you know, gets in the way with these ruminations that keep happening in people's minds get in the way and you know motivation's easy motivation is the easiest thing to do on the planet everybody says well i don't have any motivation how do you build motivation no motivation is a natural outcrop when everything else is working a plant okay. naturally grows when it has let's see sun water food a seed <laughs> yeah. yeah love yeah the basics, huh? Everything. So, um, so the other thing, of course, is trust. You know, on that list, um, uh, when you make a connection, and it's a valid connection, it's not manipulative. See, if a therapist or a coach is manipulative and trying to control them, uh, there's not much trust. They have got that from their parents or a school teacher or a boss or you know or. Um, wherever, brother or sister, but really a tr trust is where it's at. Once I gain trust with another individual, then we can make a huge difference. There's no trust internally or no trust with another person. We don't make a difference. So, and in this case, we're, tr we're working on trusting our intuition. So if I'm in resistance, immediately I, I know I'm not trusting my intuition. I mean, that's just a given. Or if, I, if I'm, uh, you know, barky or mean or uh, shaky, no, no trust there at all. Yeah. So, well, if you need, if you need a certain outcome or you need a certain result or you need it now or whatever it is, then trust does go out the window. But if you're just, you know what, I honor whatever needs to be, I honor whatever is, and then trust reemerges. And, you know, when, you know, people talk about this heart area and, and certain, and I study all different energy types, you know, the chakras and Chinese medicine, and all this kind of stuff. But if you just take this heart area and it has a lot to do with connection, of course, but trust, I know the trust is down in your gut and you just trust your gut feeling. But if you have a heart trust, that's different than a gut trust. There's a, there's a warm fuzzy there. And that warm fuzzy just opens up so much to receive information. And those who believe in the divine, it gives you divine information. Those who believe in nature or each other, it gives you that. So trust really just warms the heart. And uh, then when all this is going, those insights, like, oh, oh, they come. 
and and you and it's like oh yeah let's look at that and so denise we ought to talk about that just a little bit more for the coach and the therapist on that on insights because what if the insight comes and the client says oh that's not that was wrong and we already mentioned it go and be creative but let's talk about our own insights and and how to trust our own you know how to do that go ahead and comment on that trusting our own insights yeah which is different from trusting intuition that's part of intuition it's a piece it's a part Uh uh-huh so an insight uh to me feels more like an observation that I didn't have before. Um, Usually, you know, might be in a completely different context or, or, you know, takes what I was looking at and transforms it into a different perspective that I had never considered. Um, And it does have a, oh, moment about it for sure. Um, And when I allow for that, And when I trust an insight that there's purpose behind it, then usually within that, my intuition can guide me, you know, the next steps to follow through from a new, a new perspective. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that was your question, Ron. (laughs) Well, no, you're doing great. Uh, What I need is an example to make sure I grasp what you just said. So I was working with someone this week and, uh, you know, it was a situation where I didn't feel like I, I, honestly, I was just at a loss as to what to do. I was just like, I, I don't know how to work with this. It felt, it just felt flat, I guess would be the word. It just felt, there's not a lot going on. And so, you know, I, that's when I checked in with my intuition actually is what I was doing. I was checking in and just saying, okay, what do I need to know that I don't know? And as soon as that I asked, then I had a, I had just this imagery pull up with um, an understanding of what was happening with the situation in their life. And one thing that she had said that I, I, I understood, you know, on an energy as an energy form, but not as a perspective was, she said, I feel like there's something bad's going to happen. I feel like something bad's going to happen, you know? And I was like, okay. And, you know, we talked about it a little bit. And then she said, it's kind of like, you know, I asked her and she said, it's kind of like being at the top of a roller coaster and it's about to just go off the roller coaster. And it's just like, <gasps> you know, she's just in that moment, right? That, that kind of freak out moment. And so when I asked for the intuition, like, okay, well, what do I do with this? What the imagery that I got was a waterfall. She was riding down this river and it was falling off the waterfall, which the insight that that gave me was this is emotion. She was heading off an emotional cliff (laughs) is what it felt like. And so when we, when that, I got that insight, I understood, okay, so you're, you have a lot of fear and a lot of things that are going this way. And then we started talking about it from that new perspective with this emotion and what was leading up to that emotion and all of this, that insight gave me a ton of direction um, with what I could do um, and the intuition, you know, of, of a pathway through coping with this, you know, and, and after we, we talked about it and we dealt with, with the emotion that came with this roller coaster, right? Um, and, the, and the feelings that came off this impending doom, right? Um, she left and she's like, you know, I walked in and I thought, well, I don't know if I really need anything. I'm fine. You know, and she left and she's like, oh, I needed that so much. <laughs> I had no idea how much I needed that, you know, and, and of course she did, but she was just, she was flat. She was coping by just not feeling, which is why and I'm so absent. That is great. And so your insights uh, gave you knowledge. Yes. So it, tra- it changed from an insight and then you use that knowledge, raise the awareness, raise the creativity and a lot of creativity, uh, Mm -hmm. the way you you spoke, because you gave a metaphor, made a connection, then you trusted it and then more insights and more motivation and it just spun in a positive, positive way and the resistance went right out the door, right? Well, and she ended up motivated as well, of course, because then she left like, oh, I did need that. Oh, I do want to move forward rather than just, oh, I'm fine, you know. (laughs) 
I think I'm fine. Uh, I'm, yeah, and I'm fine is a good old teenager, yes. right? How are you? Uh, I'm fine. Uh, what's going on? Nothing. Isn't there something to talk about? No, don't bother me. <laughs> when the teenagers inside of us do that, we don't make much change. We don't yeah. change very much. And it's, it's a coping skill that each of us have because there's a lot going on. There's a lot of stress. There's this to do and that to do. And it's a shutdown mode so that we find some peace. But staying hibernated in our, our, our mind cave and our body cave won't do it just to deal with those hard emotions that we're afraid of. So actually going there, dealing with our hard emotions, with insights and um, knowledge, awareness, creativity. Hey, we feel so much better. And the teenager comes out and goes, yeah, this is pretty cool. This is fun. Yeah, I don't mind the roller coaster when it's fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> much prefer that over the waterfall anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, waterfalls are not bad if it's not too high, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this one, this one. Not had, rocks at the bottom. Yeah, it was off the planet, so to speak. It was. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, the planet's here. <laughs> yeah, we're off the edge of the earth. <laughs> so we don't want that kind of. But yeah, of course, her hers wasn't an actual roller coaster, which could be fun, you know. Yeah. Her, yeah. Was something mm -hmm. else, which was partly why was, there was a block in the awareness. Well, most everything people are dealing with is not reality, anyway. It's their perception. And, Absolutely. And so, and that's what the mind body dictionary is all about. It's dealing with perceptions, those suggestions and affirmations and conditions are views of, and what we've, we encountered, is it everything possible for each of those conditions? No, that would be volumes. And uh, that would take tons of study, which is fine. If someone wants to study it out, they can, they can write a, a host of uh, things. And, you know, we're, we're welcome to having uh, individuals and schools contact us with their insights. And we can actually integrate, if, you know, if it works, integrate some of their knowledge. And we, we do, we're affiliate. We, we want to send people to coaches and therapists who actually have the mind, body in mind. They want to bring mindfulness and empowerment in people's lives. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. That's why we did this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to send insights, communicate to us, great. And if you want us to help connect you to people, great. We'll help connect you to people. You can get on, the, uh, on our app or you can get on our website. And if you want us to send people to you, great. We'll go ahead and send people. It goes both ways. And you know, one of the values of having the app in your client's hands is it'll make their lives more insightful and their intuition will go up. And it'll be more fun for you to, to discuss those things that are in their life. And um, it facilitates your job. It just so facilitates your job. As your job is facilitated, you'll have more fun. They'll have more fun. Your capacity will go up. It is awesome. It does work. Yeah, when I, when I uh, recommend it to my clients, a lot of times I say, go home, ponder on this, and when you come back, you know, you'll be much more prepared, and they are, you know, they come back and say, well, according to this, <laughs> this is going through my, this is what's contributing to this issue in my life, which fits really well, and, you know, now I can understand, and, and then, they, then you, you, you take off a whole piece of it, and then you can get right into the meat, you know, <laughs> and, and dig into the- Just like, boom. Just yeah. like that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're not having to pull it out of them. Uh, uh, yeah. Week after week or whatever you do to help people. Um, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. No, it did, you don't want to do that. You want to have it be fun and have them be engaging. And some people are automatically. But when they start understanding their personal side to it, hey, that's pretty cool. Uh, then they start changing. That's when intuition goes up for you. Is not only when they're empowered, but you're empowered, and you see your own story, and you really could use it personally. And I say to the coaches, the therapists, use it personally. And and I have someone who I suggested using the app. It was pretty funny. I suggested using the app, and 
And she came for another session. And I said, you've been using it? Oh, yeah, I use it quite a bit. And making my life a difference. And she's writing a book, and we want to promote her and her book because we want to help other people in the empowerment world. But anyway, and I and we got into the conversation, and, and she looked at me, and, and she said, wait, did you write? <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, me and others have been instrumental in getting this out to the market. You, if you're reading that, you're reading the words, and then, of course, Denise edited and helped with the words also. And she said, wait, I didn't realize when you recommended the app that it was yours. <laughs> 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 and I said, yes, and that was a, a funny moment. But the same thing will happen to you when when you're working with people and you'll start writing words and you'll want to publish something and make a difference in other people's lives then we want to help promote that and and help raise intuition uh, uh, in in your life and your creativity and uh and it's a win-win for all of us and but even if you don't have anything to share at that level just sharing it with your clients will help your practice become um better a better work mm -hmm. and much easier and you'll enjoy it much better helping a lot of people even being able to bounce back and forth you know when they're reading it on their own they come in and you chat about it you talk about it and you'll see things they don't see or you'll point out things or notice things and and they'll say oh i didn't know think about it that way and um but then you have the tool right in front of you you know and the and the back the backing actually for your insights that's very supportive in, in any practice very yeah it's very very cool so you'll gain when you share with your clients you gain respect your capacity goes up uh your professional capacity really goes up and increases enhances your intuition and when your intuition goes up ah brings in the heart hmm, so much fun people reconnect everybody wanted a mom who had great intuition with love yes <laughs> <laughs> Billy, what are you doing in there? Yeah, we don't want that guy. We want the eye on the back of your head, right? <laughs> yeah, mom always does. You know, mom always had that eye on the back of the head. So, as my daughter says, I always know when the kids are in trouble, it gets really quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really quiet. <laughs> but anyway, so intuition goes up, your knowledge goes up, and your resources you know, it grows and it's great.